today we have uh, Nadim, uh, who's uh, the new Binance East Africa director. Um, very excited to have him on the call today to talk about his journey in the crypto space, but more importantly about his new role at Binance. Hi, Nadim. Hey, David. Thanks very much for having me. A real pleasure to be here. All right. It's a pleasure also to have you, Nadim, again. Um, I don't know if I, I have to say welcome to the crypto community in East Africa, but again, let's let, you know, you know, let us know a bit more about, you know, who you are and how you got into the crypto space and also, you know, how you got to work at Binance. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I'll break those down into three, a little bit about me. So, um, so Nadim, my professional journey actually started as a corporate commercial lawyer um, and realized that, um, you know, where I felt most uh, stimulated was at the nexus of sort of where I was working on transactions that um, that incorporated a bit of innovation, um, disruption and growth. And so I decided to pivot um, and and a number of roles that I've held, held since um, have been really very much in learning and growing in that space. Um, so I think that's a little bit around around my background. I've been building out my operational experience for the last 10 years or so um, outside of uh, outside of um, or in, in many different spaces. And then specifically on crypto, I think I've been privileged enough or fortunate enough to be to have been exposed to the industry at quite an early stage, um, both, I guess, through it as an from an observer perspective, but um, also in, you know, in investing. So, um, so, uh, you know, number number one, a lot of friends were were in the crypto space, either through buying um, themselves and, you know, a very close um, person to me actually lost all their investments in, you know, 2014 Mt. Gox collapse. Um, um, I've had friends who've mined um, and built out, um, who built out their own rigs and set up their own rigs. And so, uh, you know, seen seen what that's what what that's been involved, or what what it, what's involved in taking that, and then um, yeah, I've taken a course in blockchain. I've um, I'm I'm very much interested. I think the background in law also you know pulled pulled my interest deeply into what blockchain looks like and how that could really disrupt a whole range of different industries from real estate. We know some of the challenges that we work with here in Kenya. Um, and how can some of these be solved um, within with new technologies? Um, and then you know that's that's I guess accelerated through to um, to the financial services financial services um, sector too. I think then the third part is working at Binance. So um, so yeah, the opportunity came came my way uh, um, earlier this year. Um, you know, going back to the earlier point of where you know the nexus between. Um, innovation, growth, learning, disruption came through, and I was really like attracted to where we are at um, and, and what sort of a, the role would involve at Binance. Secondly, is uh, you know what Binance's journey has looked like really appealed to me, um, the growth that they've been able to unlock or we've been able to unlock, and um, and then finally is that yeah I think the culture at Binance um, again really appealed to me. There's uh, there are a number of different factors behind. Um, the decision to move here and I'm really glad that awesome um thank you for that breakdown thank you for that you know history uh looks like you've been around for quite a while Nadim <laughs> so uh you, you're not new to the crypto space obviously um and um I think that brings me to the next question on you know your opinions on the current crypto you know industry globally I, I mean from your opinion how does it look like um and where do you think it will be in the next couple of months? Yeah, I think like fantastic question, David. I think, um, you know, uh, I guess as we as we're currently in this market, we all ask ourselves like, you know, let's take stock on where we're at. I think a couple of points here that I would probably emphasize. The first is still very early, right? We're um, we're less than two decades into the journey. Um, you know, within the blockchain crypto ecosystem. Uh, if you look at like what DeFi and the, the numbers that you read out in reports, it, it went from zero to 100 billion in like less than two years. And I think there's still a lot of like scope for it to grow further from there. Um, in addition, if you if you take um, if you take where sort of financial penetration has been and what it looks like, um, you look at statistics around what uh, both from a retail investor perspective and what millennials will inherit over the next 20 years and you apply a certain 
percentage of that into into this decentralized financial systems um you know with a current market cap of 850 billion give or take depending on what day you're looking at the numbers um you know it really really suggests that we're still very early into the into the ecosystem um i think the second part is you know being re recognizing where we're at currently um you know markets have turned um, or have turned this year and there's been a little bit of there's or there's been a lot of movement and I think it's a great time to build so if you look back and you pattern match over history um, you know some of some of the greatest businesses that have come out have come through building and you know focusing on their tech stack focusing on on what their security security solutions look like um, and what their product offerings do you know during periods um, like what we're going through currently um, um, speaking of which, I think that, you know, um, as you ask, like what the current state of, of crypto looks like, you know, we've had certain instances over the last couple of weeks, which I think also requires, you know, um, the acceleration of regulation in the space. Um, it's important for us to have um, policies that protect consumers. Um, I really believe that encourage innovation and move move our industry forward. Um, so I think that would be the third piece. And the two other things that I'd say is that it's time that we also build a lot of trust and transparency in the industry. Um, you know, Binance has taken um, taken an active step um, with launching our proof of reserves um, and the ability to you know to self verify some of their assets. And I think there'll be some some in, some interesting product launches that we that um, that, that we'll be seeing soon. Um, yeah, I think, um, and I think with that, you know, CZ's also pointed out what there's a there's a really interesting article that I'd encourage like everyone to read what it takes for um, you know some of the six pillars to build out a healthy exchange, um, and so I think that that kind of gives me gives us a cross cross section of how I think about the industry. Um, spoken like a like a lawyer, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so Nadim. Um, now, being in East Africa, um, um, for people who don't know, you're actually Kenyan, right? That's right. Yeah, <laughs> so, from Mombasa. <laughs> from Mombasa. So, I mean, being a Kenyan, you know, looking at the state of economy, I know the economy globally, you know, doesn't look good. But, you know, just focusing on East Africa, Kenya and other countries, uh, what do you think of um, the state of the economy now? Um, you know the the currency valuation and what's happening there, um, and and how does it inform maybe your your outlook when it comes to crypto adoption and and you know things around digital currencies? Yeah, thanks, David. I think um, again, I, I'll I'll take it in two approaches. The first is just an overview. So where are we at? You know. Uh, number one, large populations in all three countries, still very early stage from a GDP perspective. You know, the last numbers that I'd seen, you know, Kenya was like sub $5,000 GDP per capita. Uganda was at like, you know, sub 3,000. Um, Tanzania at like sub 2,000. So still at a very early stage in sort of our economic journey, um, you know, as a population. Um, high growth rates, right? So we're growing like, you know, close to 7% here in Kenya, GDP um, GDP annually. Um, but then, so so optimistic, but then at the same time, like, you know, if, if we look at where inflation's at, if we look at where unemployment's at, if we look at what the trend of some of our, our currencies here, um, you know, devaluation of the Kenya shilling that's been happening over this over the past year. And if you draw out a five year trend from 2008, 2018 to now, what's happened to the shilling? I think a lot of these fundamental economic measures or indicators, you know, really drive um, even more validity around how important um, a crypt, you know crypto blockchain infrastructure um, is in the for the region so um so i'm i'm optimistic i think that again very early stage if you look at the number of like sort of if you look at statistics around mobile mobile phone penetration um, smartphone penetration being a much smaller subset of that if you look at like what percentage of the population is banked versus unbanked um huge potential um, of growth in the industry yeah, I mean, actually, speaking of the unbanked and mobile money users, maybe would you give our listeners, you know, you know, some some numbers to understand just, you know, the scope of uh, some of these things we are discussing. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I'm going to have to refer to some numbers so I don't get the statistics wrong. But I've I saw um, I've seen something to the extent that you know 40 percent of of our population has access to banking services. Um, you know, of our, of the addressable market. Um, you know, so that's a significant significant amount isn't doesn't have access um the, the figure then even gets even smaller when it's when you look at who who is banked um and that's outside of mobile for mobile money services um and i think it becomes in you know into like just over the single digit number i don't have the, the figure right in front of me but i'm happy to get back to you with that specifically now speaking of users let's let's go into binance um Binance has been operational in, in the market for quite, you know, quite a while, you know, obviously quite successful. Uh, do you mind sharing some of the numbers, you know, from Binance? You know, how, how many users do you guys have in East Africa across your different services? Yeah, thanks for the question. I think what I can share is like we're we are looking to grow our user base. Um, you know, we're seeing some levels of adoption. Um, and looking really to to build further into into um, trying to address some of the, the the market that we are looking to serve. I, I would add that we're also you know crypto is super early. Like I said, there's a lot of trust that needs to be built in the market, and I think there's a lot of awareness and education that needs to happen. So um, that's what I can share. All right. Um, okay. Thanks for that. Um, now, uh, I I bet this is your favorite question. You know, as a lawyer. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, the state of crypto regulation in East Africa. Where do we stand, you know, right this moment? Yeah. So I think there's, um, you know, if we look at if we look across um, East Africa, there's um, there's generally a consensus around what our regulators have, uh, the approach that our regulators have taken, and it's sort of um, let's hold back, let's um, let's understand um, what what this space looks like before we decide to regulate it. Um, and I think, you know, uh, so that, you know, that's consistent across. So if you look at what, what's what's happening, um, there's an it, there's been an internet, there's been an international study um, which suggests that I think close to, is it, um, I think it's close to like 86% of, um, it's a 2021 study and it's like close to 86% of central banks are actively researching about um, crypto. I think close to 60% are now um, experimenting um, and close to 14% were, were testing pilots, particularly around, you know, CBDCs. And, um, and so we're quite excited as to like what the, how the regulatory landscape is go, going to look like soon. Um, I think what we have seen in Kenya is that there that there is a move push towards and seems to be more attention in this space. Um, and we're seeing things being proposed um, and conversations already start happening, um, um, or at least that might be out there and um, sort of within the news sphere around what regulation may look like more um, you know, in the near future. I mean, when you hear comments like the Central Bank of Kenya warning about crypto trading and, and you know, people to keep away and all that, um, what are your comments? I mean, again, also we've had the same with the Bank of Tanzania commenting on, you know, crypto uh, quite negatively. Uh, I mean, uh, what would you say about some of these comments and, and how informed are they, especially from the regulators? Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, the, the I would I haven't had an opportunity to and would like to understand where the sentiment is, is coming from. I think I'd rather I, you know, as as someone who enjoys being in the innovation space, what I do, what I would like to reiterate is the importance of protecting consumers, but also encouraging innovation, right? So I think uh, a blanket seize and desist policy doesn't quite work in, in, within that within that space. And I think there, if you look at markets more globally, um, you know, the South African Reserve Bank has issued guidance note, note to banks, you know, discouraging them from cutting off companies that offer crypto services and largely around, you know, making sure that monitoring, you know, money laundering and proliferation of uh, financing activity becomes more becomes more transparent right there. So uh, there's also, you know, this is a positive update that, and one that we agree with. So, um, so yeah, so where, where, where we've seen there's a ban, it doesn't ordinarily change user behavior, right? So 
so um um and if anything it just it it we've seen more and more people looking for different ways to interact with crypto and and i guess you know it ultimately reduces the the ability for regulators to monitor financial activity so we've always put for us at binance we've always put monitoring um and protecting measures protective measures in place to to make sure our users um our users are put first and we prevent um, sort of any fraudulent activity you know that that, um, that happened on the app speaking of regulation i mean uh kenya always stands out in east africa but you know we know we have uganda we have ethiopia we have other countries that are also joining the east african community i mean um what what are your thoughts around some of these countries how uh, what do you see happening there when it comes to crypto regulation you know and uh, things surrounding you know innovation as well like you mentioned sure so i think david i think like taking a step back there's like several use cases right for both crypto and blockchain um you know um there is a there's a piece around investing um trading there's a piece around sort of movement of money between sort of p2p play or peer to peer play there's a remittance play so it really like i think it's scenario based based on each country you know um in addition in addition to that you know we've talked about some of the the trends that we're seeing in east africa so high, large populations a bigger move towards a middle class um but relatively you know the cur- currencies looking a certain way um and so you know an alternative asset class to invest to to secure so to secure savings um you know really provides an additional an additional outlet um for the population and so um again like i think uh, my thought process is that it's early stage um huge use case we're likely to see a lot more proliferation and growth over the next over the coming years as um as people become more educated more aware of what sort of the value um you know uh, bl- the pr- blockchain technology but also cryptocurrencies provide um and and again let's you know i think if you break it down into different you know you have your sort of your fiat back coin you have your asset back coin and then you have your algorithmic one um you know if, and if regulators can kind of jump onto this path um you know there's a lot to be said for what could be achieved with um currency backed you know um coins so so optimistic i think ethiopia again large market and um tanzania rwanda you know and the rest of the the, the east africa region i mean with safaricom uh, getting into ethiopia and claiming that you know they see growth bypassing kenya in in 10 years or less do you see something similar happening with binance you know entering some of these new markets as well yeah look i think um i think we we are very bullish on the in the region generally um you know as 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 binance and in, for that matter africa as a continent um you know it's it's being emphasized by building out sort of more of more of a local presence and a team here um um and so you know now specifically as to like which which country is going to have sort of or you know have the greatest adoption by 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 population or actual numbers i think it's still early to see um but what i would what i would say is that look there's use cases throughout um you know on multiple different fronts and um yeah and we're excited and now now moving into you know diving just a bit into mobile money i know that when binance launched in the kenyan market about 2 years ago you know, people are quite excited with the mobile money you know ability to cash in and cash out uh but then that sort of got disabled um i, I mean do you mind letting us know you know what happened and possibly is there uh, can we look forward to you know uh, people being able to use mobile money on finance in the future yeah absolutely and it would be something that you know so um something that i really hope can be unlocked soon um i think the first thing to clarify here is that we you know as binance we didn't disable it i think what um what had happened was um our, you know our central bank has has provided um provide guidance to a bank a banking institutions not to be dealing with anything to do with crypto and as a result one of our third party uh, providers who was providing the integration for mobile money on our platform um had to sort of or was asked to kind of you know stop 
um, stop the product. Um, so it wasn't something that we had disabled ourselves. Um, yeah, I think um, as we try and work more closely, as we're hoping to work more closely with um, within the ecosystem um, here in here in Kenya and across East Africa, I think the key parts of how do we how do we build adoption is also making sure that how do you how do you on ramp and off ramp relatively seamlessly. Um, mobile money, obviously, penetration in Kenya and within the region is growing. Um, is probably one of the most um, you know prolific globally um, and so um, and so it's important for us to be able to serve our customers and your know, mobile money is a, is a is a very important channel to doing so yeah indeed I mean I mean that's that's one of the questions we get asked about Binance you know can I buy Bitcoin on Binance on you know M-Pesa so uh, we really be good to have you know M-Pesa back you know and <laughs> able to buy crypto um, couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Um, now, again, going back to the legal aspects, the regulation and, and you know, things are surrounding you know, regulation in East Africa. Um, have you guys, you know, engaged the government when it comes to crypto regulation, um, you know, across East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, you know, how, and how, if, if you have, how have those conversations been? Sure, absolutely. So I think like um, what I would say, David, is that, you know, Binance, we believe that it, we have a fundamental responsibility to work with regulators, um, you know, and we believe that a well-regulated crypto market provides like greater protection for users, right? Um, and so um, so we strongly believe that, you know, a, a stable regulatory environment um, really can support innovation um, and, you know, is really essential to establishing trust in the industry um you know and you know that's where we'll really see long-term growth um by by virtue of buying in um that's what what i would say again i'm early in the role um so things so yeah um so i think we we would like to and we we continue to um to try all right awesome uh looking forward you know to seeing you you know push things forward <laughs> hopefully now as we wind up nadim you know um as 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 the new Binance East Africa director, you know people are obviously eager to you know uh, learn more about you. Um, what would be your message to the crypto community enthusiasts in East Africa? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, what what would you like to see, and and what would you also like to hear from them as well? Sure, I think um, I think what what I would like to say uh, to begin with is. You know, um, education is paramount. Like, take your time, learn, really learn about the, the different products, the different values, um, before base before you decide to take any major steps. Like, don't rely just on ESA. Um, you know, do your own research in order to take um, to take um, real accountability. Um, and I I would also say that like the use cases for for both crypto and blockchain remain solid. The technological innovations, I believe, will stand the test of time. Um, and I guess that's kind of my message out there to sort of the community and the community that, you know, people who will be joining the community um, or that we hope that will will join and strengthen the community. Um, yeah, I think I'd love to interact more, understand how we can build better as Binance, how we can serve um, you know, users on our on on our platform more appropriately. I think there's a lot of products that we um, that we're building um, and and platforms that we are and and how we can help improve that would be um, would be great. So I think creating more dialogue within the community would be something that um, I I put a lot of importance on. If I want to reach out to you to talk to you about Binance challenges they're having or just a word or two, how can they reach out? Yeah, there. Um, I'm off. I you will often see me at at Binance meetups. I think um, also in addition to that, um, I, yeah, you know, find me on any of my um, of any of the channels and um, and reach out. Would um, would love to hear more. Thank you so much, Nadim. Uh, we really appreciate you talking to us. I think uh, you we are the first media outlet for, uh, uh, to talk to. Uh, you know, you as the new Binance director and. Uh, we really appreciate that. And yeah, we look forward to interacting with you within the community. 
Absolutely. And thanks so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it and, um, and look forward to being in touch soon.